So, you've landed a reverse shell, but the job isn't done. Now it's time to go deeper. You've got limited access, and the real treasure is sitting behind the root account. So how do you take control? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Privilege Escalation. Starting with number one, kernel exploits. First stop is always the kernel. Outdated kernels are an easy gold mine, but what is a kernel for those of you who don't know? The kernel is software that ships with the operating system you have installed on your machine. It acts as a bridge between the hardware of the machine and the rest of the operating system, as well as other software. It handles tasks such as process management, scheduling tasks, and enforcing security through permissions. Kernel exploits are far and wide. All you have to do is load one onto the machine, compile it if necessary, and run. You'll start by searching for vulnerabilities tied to the target's kernel version. Did you find one? You're in. Try Dirty Cow or any of the well-documented ones. But remember, kernel exploits can be a double-edged sword and may not be a good idea for a pen test. Always know where the water is before you play with fire. In this example here, we have a Linux machine vulnerable to the Dirty Cow exploit, which I'll have linked below. The first step is to gather information about the kernel version. Use the following commands to do so, which is essential for determining if known vulnerabilities are present. Uname, which displays all system information including the kernel version, architecture, and hostname. Uname-R, which specifically shows the kernel version. Cat slash proc slash version displays detailed information about the kernel's version, compiler, and build time of the Linux system. Cat etc slash star release shows the distribution name, version, and other release information for the operating system. Determine the architecture with the arc command. This will identify whether the system is 32-bit or 64-bit which can help narrow down applicable exploits. If, for whatever reason, the arc command doesn't work, use getconf long underscore bit, which will return the system's architecture bit length, indicating whether the system is 32-bit or 64-bit. Finally, we can use searchploit to narrow down our results. For privilege escalation exploits specifically, we can use searchploit Linux kernel, the version number, priv-esc to specify privilege escalation exploits. If you don't get any results, you can use searchploit Linux kernel, the version, without specifying priv-esc to see what other exploits are available. Number two. SUID and SGID executables, otherwise known as the set user ID and set group ID executables. You'd be surprised how often admins leave the keys in the ignition with these. Run a quick scan across the system with find slash dash perm dash u equals s dash type f. If you've got something like nmap or find with SUID enabled, you've just been handed the ability to escalate. You may not have find or nmap available on a system, which is highly likely. In that case, you should read my LinkedIn article about find alternatives for achieving privilege escalation, which I'll have linked below after its release. Now let's understand the find command a little better here. If you tried the first command I gave you, you likely experienced a lot of output in gibberish. What we can do is make our command more specific, like so. Find slash dash perm 6000 to feeding into slash dev slash null grep slash bin. What's happening here is we are calling the find command to check out our root directory, indicated by the slash. When we use dash perm 6000 in a command, we are telling the system to find files with special permissions for SUID and SGID. These permissions can let someone run a file with extra power, 
like pretending to be the file's owner, which is usually root. If this sounds similar to chmod, then you are correct. However, chmod differs from this command because it is designed to change permissions, but dash perm 6000 is meant for finding the files with those permissions already set. Lastly, two feeding into slash dev slash null. This, simply put, suppresses error messages. Two arrow tells the system to redirect error messages to a specific location. Two is the file descriptor. By suppressing these standard errors, we can then send them to slash dev slash null, which is a special location on Linux that's more of a black hole, meaning the information is discarded and never saved, aka great for stealth. Ideally, we will find something in the bin directory, in which case we have found nmap. We can then open a web browser and proceed to GTFO bins, which documents Unix binaries that we can use to escalate our privileges. When we launch nmap in interactive mode, we can verify that this version of nmap is vulnerable to exploitation. We follow GTFO bins guidance and we've now upgraded our shell with root privileges. Number three, weak file permissions. These are like walking into a safe with the door wide open. If you can write to something such as slash etc slash password, then congratulations, you're now root. Modify that file and drop yourself in. It is incredibly rare that you'll ever find this, but not impossible. For finding other files with weak permissions, use the following command. Find slash dash perm dash o plus w dash perm dash o plus x dash type f to feeding into slash dev slash null. Notice our change with the perm command, as well as the fact that we call it twice. Perm o plus w finds files that are world writable, meaning anybody can write to them. Perm o plus x finds files that are world executable meaning anyone can execute the program. If you've ever launched chmod777 on your machine like a script kitty, this command is going to find that. As a hacker, if you can write to and execute a file, then you're already in. Number four, cracked user passwords. Don't forget the obvious, crack those passwords. Hashcat will be the most professional tool for you to use as a pen tester. Crack one password, and you'll find that users tend to recycle them across accounts, or worse, reuse them with sudo. You crack it, you're one step closer. In this example, an administrator surprisingly left slash etc slash shadow open to being written to. This is not only rare, but incredibly dangerous. I don't expect these to come up on a pen test, but you can check the file permissions of the shadow file to see. To change the shadow file's permissions, we need root access. If we are trying to escalate our privileges, this usually doesn't work. See now as I humorously cat out the shadow file and proceed to crack the hash with hashcat. Why is this useful? Now that you're in their network, there is no telling where they've reused this password. Always be sure to perform the following checks. Cat slash etc slash shadow which may show you password hashes, but only if you're very, very lucky. Cat slash etc slash password, which will at least give you an idea of what accounts on the system are worth trying to compromise. Number five, misconfigured pseudo permissions. If you've got pseudo to something that doesn't require a password, you've just been given a gift. Pseudo bash or pseudo sue can get you root. Even if you only use sudo for specific commands, you'd be surprised how vulnerable some binaries are. Administrators sometimes have a bad habit of leaving these open. Also, they can automate root required tasks without manual intervention. Use the command sudo-l to see what root permissions your current account has. If anything has something similar to all no password slash user slash bin, with a vulnerable program following after, it means the hacker can run that program as root without needing to enter a password. 
If you find this vulnerability, you can once again use GTFO bins for exploitation. Number 6. Harvest Passwords or SSH Keys SSH keys, LOL. Everyone loves them, but not everyone protects them. If you can grab a private key from a user's home directory, it's game over. You can log in as that user, or better yet, log into another system they have access to. Make sure to check certain directories for SSH keys, such as slash user, the name of the local user, slash dot SSH, or slash user slash sbin slash dot SSH. While rare, it is not at all impossible. You may also find them in different directories across the machine. Number 7. Abusing Capabilities Linux capabilities are a bit difficult to understand at first, but they will make you highly proficient as a hacker. They are like SUID, but sneakier. Check for binaries with elevated capabilities using getcap-r slash. If something's got cap underscore set UID equals EP, it's practically begging for you to escalate. Use the following command to check for capability abuse get cap dash r slash two filtering out into slash dev slash null then grep the following i will leave this command in the description of the video we used get cap dash r slash to find files across the entire file system with special capabilities for those of you new to hacking let's quickly talk about what get cap does and why it matters Linux capabilities are like little chunks of superpowers that are given to specific binaries instead of complete root access. Normally, only root can do certain things, but with capabilities, some binaries can perform actions that are usually restricted. When we run the getcap-r slash command, we're asking the system to show us which files, aka binaries, have these special permissions. Binaries with certain capabilities can be abused to perform tasks such as capturing network traffic, bypassing file permissions, or even changing system configurations. In short, they can give us more control than we're supposed to have. For example, if a binary has the capability cap underscore DAC underscore override, it could read any file, even sensitive ones like slash etc slash shadow that are normally off limits. This can help us escalate privileges by reading password hashes or modifying system files. That's why identifying these binaries is important to know for Linux machines. For those of you more seasoned hackers, you want to look out for binaries with capabilities such as cap underscore net underscore admin, which is disgustingly dangerous. With this, you can change IPs, modify routing, or even play with firewalls, manipulate the flow of the traffic, and we could potentially intercept privileged user data. This is a video all on its own. Pay attention to cap underscore DAC underscore override as well, which is what will allow you to bypass file permissions and escalate our privileges. Find a binary with this capability, and we could use it to read or write to files we normally wouldn't have access to, such as slash etc slash shadow. While there are other capabilities worth mentioning, focus on these for now. Keep in mind that if you are new to hacking, you have a long way to go before stumbling across this intense method. Number 8. Cron Job Exploits Cron Jobs Ugh. It is surprising how careless admins can be here. If a root-owned cron job is calling a script that you can write to, you're already in. Modify the script, wait for it to run, and you'll be holding root's keys in no time. If you find said script, a typical bash reverse shell will suffice. Number 9. Path Variable Exploitation Watch for scripts that call binaries without specifying their full path. If you can modify the path variable, you can trick the script into running your version of a common command, but with root privileges. This is one you'll likely see on pen tests and even Windows machines. Let's say that we found a cron job executing a script on a Linux machine. The script is readable and writable to us, the lowly user. You will encounter these frequently on vulnerable machines. 
In our case, we see the location of the script being used in the cron job. I will state now that reading the cron tab for root is not as simple as it seems, and often requires extra effort or likely isn't possible without root privileges. In your travels, you may randomly come across scripts that trigger your sixth sense, such as this one, in which case you may consider giving it a shot. This script calls tar without specifying the full path slash bin slash tar, which is crucial for the exploitation. We can see in the cron tab that the script is set to execute every minute. The goal is to replace the tar command with a malicious script by modifying the path variable. In a directory you control, such as slash temp, create a fake tar script and add a reverse shell payload of whatever type you prefer. To exploit the vulnerability, modify the path environment variable so that the system searches for the malicious tar script in slash temp before the legitimate tar. This puts slash temp at the front of the path meaning that the system will execute your fake tar before the legitimate slash bin slash tar command. Now, when the cron job runs the vulnerable script, it will execute the malicious tar script from slash temp instead of the legitimate tar binary. This will trigger the reverse shell, giving you access to the system with the privileges of the user running the cron job, which should be root. If you stuck with me this far, then you are on your way to mastering ethical hacking. For what you don't know, you will learn. While this is primarily a mid-level explanation of these vulnerabilities, I leave this knowledge in your hands for you to at least begin your journey. On a side note, this video was very difficult to make. I sincerely appreciate you leaving any feedback for me in the comments, as my goal is for you to learn while also being entertained. Thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on part two of this video.